Fox Sports. We are Buffalo. We are Minnesota. in downtown Houston and two red hot teams will heat things up inside Minute Maid Park 2. It's the Twins and the Astros Part 2 this weekend on Fox Sports North. Both teams are very much in the postseason picture as we get into the final month of the season. The Astros trying to hold off the Rangers in the division while the Twins try to surpass them in the wild card race. Welcome inside Minute Maid Park. I'm Jamie Hirsch. It's been a long time since these two teams played meaningful baseball games in the month of September, but here we are. There's a lot of excitement in this building as we get ready to start this three-game weekend set. Here's your series setup. It has been a Cinderella season for both the Twins and Astros, who are both well ahead of where they were last year. A remarkable turnaround sparked by new managers and an influx of young talent. The Twins are hoping this road trip starts the way the last one ended, with six wins in their last seven on the road. Tonight marks the start of a nine-game, ten-day road trip. For the Astros, it's all or nothing in the hitting department. They swing for the fences, and it's either hit or miss, literally, with the second-most home runs and strikeouts in all of baseball. There is plenty to keep your eye on this weekend between the Twins and Astros, especially when it comes to young talent. After this, Dick Kramer and Jack Morris will take a look at the talented rookies we'll see in this series as the Twins and the Astros go head-to-head -head right here on Fox Sports North. on all your home improvement needs. We welcome you to Minute Maid Park in Houston. Two surprising teams start a three-game series here tonight. Mike Pelfrey will go for the Minnesota Twins. Colin McHugh will go for the first place Houston Astros. 
And good Friday evening to you from Minute Maid Park. Dick Bramer along with Jack Morris. No one could have imagined a year ago that this Labor Day weekend series between Houston and Minnesota would be as important as it is to the playoff picture in the American League. You look at the rosters and the youth on this team, not only might the two teams make it to the playoffs this year, they might be perennial entrants. Yeah, I think you're seeing the future of baseball, at least the future stars of the game are going to be uh, on board and on the field there tonight here in Houston. Carlos Correa certainly has made a splash and a name for himself already in this Houston area. There's a lot of excitement about him and the Twins fans are already familiar with Eddie Rosario and Miguel Snow and what they can bring to the table. There's a lot of young talent on this ball, ball field tonight. Miguel Snow in his last 21 games has just been outstanding. Slugging percentages off the charts. He's hitting 338, 10 home runs, 24 RBIs, driving the ball all over the place. And it's just so much fun to watch this guy and the patience that he brings for a young hitter. The Astros have gotten into the playoff picture by establishing a very good, very young starting rotation. Last weekend in Minnesota, the Twins did not see Colin McHugh, but they get him in the opener here tonight. Yeah, he's seeking his 15th win, and he's got some good stuff. He's got the classic over-the-top curveball. It's 12 to 6 breaking ball, a lot like your uh, broadcast buddy, uh, Bert Flyleman. Uh, you know, this is the kind of guy that uh, has done, figured things out. He's got a little bit higher ERA for his record, but seeking his 15th win, he's done a very good job. Might very well be that in 2015 we're seeing a changing of the guard. A couple of young teams hoping to get into the playoffs this year and beyond. And we've got the opener of this three-game series between the surprising Twins and the surprising Astros. out punch at New York two weeks ago Minnesota has gotten up off the mat and has rejoined the postseason fight the twins have won four straight series while winning 10 of 13 games tonight they are ready to rumble with another playoff contender the American League Cinderella slipper is still up for grabs who will the shoe fit we'll get a clue this weekend in Houston on Fox Sports North Last weekend, the series was in Minnesota. And the Twins took two out of three. And you tend to forget before that disastrous three game series in New York, the Twins won a couple of series at home. So they come into this series having won six of their last seven series. It's been a nice extended run that has seen the Twins reemerge as a potential playoff team. Well, this is a 
very very important se uh, series for both ball clubs but especially the twins they're going to have a tough road trip playing two teams that have got better records at home than they do and the twins have established an outstanding record at home themselves Menards batting order has Aaron Hicks on top just rejoining the ball club after a rehab assignment that Brian Dozier Joe Maurer Miguel Sano Trevor Plouffe Eddie Rosario Torrey Hunter Kurt Suzuki and Eduardo Escobar and they're going to be facing uh, right hander Colin McHugh he's making his 27th to start of the year he's seeking his 15th win and his last time out in his first start at Yankee Stadium and went six in the third inning striking out eight and only walking two, picking up his 14th win he has held the opposition in two runs or less in five consecutive starts so twins are going to have their hands full tonight going to have to try to capitalize on mistakes that hopefully McHugh will make for them. As the Twins welcome back Aaron Hicks, the Astros tonight welcome back George Springer. He's in right. Carlos Gomez in center. Colby Rasmus in left on the Northland Ford defense. Jed Lowry, Carlos Correa did play in Minnesota last weekend. Jose Altuve, Luis Valbuena, and Hank Conger, who's become now the regular catcher for the Astros. Springer put on the disabled list back on July 1st with a broken wrist. And the Astros have been patiently awaiting his return. He means so much to this Astros lineup. Well, a couple things going for the Astros in this series versus the series against the Twins at home. They got Springer back in the lineup. Correa's playing short. We're going to have to face Dallas Keuchel, and they've been very, very good here at Minute Maid Park. As you said, the Twins uh, have put together the fourth best uh, home record in the American League, and first two legs of this road trip have the twins playing in Houston and Kansas City those are two teams that have two of the three teams that have a better record at home than the twins the Blue Jays the other team here's Aaron Hicks and back in the big leagues and he's facing a, a pole shift as a left handed batter and the first pitch fouled over the twins dugout. Good to see Aaron back in the lineup he's uh, Obviously worked hard. He's played very well in his uh, short period down in Rochester. And, uh, good to see him leading off again for the Twins. Back to the glove of the pitcher. Underhanded the first one down. Hicks is retired. And that'll bring up Brian Dozier. Dozier settling more frequently now into the second spot in the batting order. Of course, hit leadoff most of the year where he hit most of his 26 home runs. Still has a chance to hit 30 this year, obviously. There's a foul back on the first pitch from Colin McHugh. Keep coming right after the Twins hitters. He challenges them. He's got good stuff. We talked about that in the pregame, and he will come right at you. Doesn't walk a lot of guys. Right center field. Springer drifting toward the gap. Two down. McHugh's teammate and the starting pitcher for the Astros on Sunday, Dallas Keuchel, was the American League pitcher of the month in August. But uh, McHugh doesn't have to apologize for what he did in August. He was two and two with a 1.89 ERA in the month. If not for his teammate, McHugh might have won the American League Pitcher of the Month. Yeah, when you got guys pitching as well as they are, I mean, then you throw in a no hitter, but Mike Fires and he's won back to back games. Uh, you know, they've got a good young staff. Tomorrow's pitcher also got good stuff for a young guy. Ball one to Joe Maurer. And now ball two. Got a prediction here. Bert and I and you and Roy and I, we haven't done much calling at some point in this three game series. I got Maurer putting one into the Crawford boxes in left field, the seats in left. This ballpark really is suited to his swing. Swing and a miss there, and it's two and one. It certainly has been kind of stamped as a hitter's ballpark, very unique in its uh, outfield dimensions. 
Matthew Jettison's in and out. You can see it down the line there. Uh, Going to go about a you know, 100 feet or so, and it goes back into the bullpens. It's a foul ball. Well, it's 436 feet to center field. They've got the hill, which they're going to remove during the offseason. This is the last year of Cal's Hill in center field. The flagpole is in place. There's some elements of the old Tiger Stadium here. Yeah, 440, the old Tiger Stadium with the foul pole padded just like that without the hill. <laughs> two and two. And Bauer lines one to left. Rasmus in the corner won't get it. Not a home run, but a. Extra base hit nonetheless to left field from our the ball getting by the second baseman El Tuve and Belbuena right where he should be backing it up and that'll bring up Sano. Two out hit for Joe gets him in the scoring position gives Miguel Sano a chance first time these Astro fans are going to see the Twins young star. And so Sano with Mauer's two out double will have a chance. Did not play in the homestand and series finale yesterday. Didn't start. He did come off the bench and pinch hit and hit a fly ball to right. Look at that OPS over 1,000. Breaking ball snaps over. One strike. Well, he acted like he was fooled there. But trust me, he was tracking that ball. And if. Uh, McHugh throws another one like that and leaves it up a little bit. Could be exciting. That's ball up and in. And we saw that in the White Sox series, yeah. didn't we? You know, he looked at a. Well, he didn't. He didn't take such a obvious take in that particular at bat. He just sort of tracked the ball. But this one, he was actually looked like he was kind of bailing on. And out of right center field. It's down for a hit. Mauer around third. They're going to wave him in. Gomez's throw to the plate. And Mauer is out, and he's going to claim that he had no sliding lane. Conger with the tag and the catch, and the Twins will challenge this based on the fact that Mauer had nowhere to slide. Paul Molitor out of the dugout, and it's the first time that we have. I think seeing the twins challenge this particular play. Well, the rule has been put in place because of the contact that is made at home plate between the runners and the catchers. And you can see that Conger is straddling the line. So if there's ever been a definitive reason to overrule this, I think Paul Mollard has a reason right here. Joe Mauer doesn't have anywhere to go, and he has to go through Conger. You have to give the runner a lane. That play, uh, that rule was put in place uh, before the 2014 season. The Twins, I think, almost were in position to challenge the call when Buxton got thrown out at the plate uh, the other night. You brought up that point as we showed the replay. There really wasn't much of a sliding lane for Buxton here. It didn't appear like there was any place yeah. for Molitor to go and, or for and, a Mauer to go. Right. And, uh, you know, Conger on defense has got to play the hop, but it's funny how it's changed over the course of this summer. Uh, when they first put the rule in, the catchers were really up on on the infield grass. They weren't sitting back towards yeah. home plate, and that clearly is no room for Joe Mauer. He's got to go right through them. They're going to finally take a look after. Uh, they will take a look at it. You can see Conger was blocking the plate without the ball. He. With the new rule is supposed to be in front of the foul line both feet in front of the foul line. And so we'll see how this turns out but I'm not so sure that Mauer got scraped up on the play isn't going to score the game's first run anyway. So now we'll get credit for a hit now we'll see whether he gets credit for a run batted in. Whether you like the rule or not. Conger's left foot was clearly inside on the foul side I should say outside. The foul line, and that is, from what I understand, the determining factor. Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to catch that ball on the infield side of that line and have to go back. If you're either that or you have to play it behind the line and give them that front part of the plate, but you can't do both. And Mauer, the former catcher, they're calling him out. There, there is no run. And it makes me wonder why there is the rule in the yeah. first place.
it to me. If the rule is put in place, this is the first time in nearly two years. Look where his foot is. He's straddling the foul line with one foot on each side. And as I understood the rule, catchers cannot position themselves that way. Well, it's clearly from every angle we've seen. You know, I think it's another case where umpires are helping out umpires. And uh, if they had a unbiased committee in New York and gave those guys time off so they didn't have to go into that room I think you might have that reversed and now Pelfrey delivers ball one to George Springer back in the Houston lineup for the first time in more than two months and the Twins get a couple of two out hits and in a series like this every run important here's the Menards batting order with Springer followed by Altuve Correa Gaddis Lowry Gomez Rasmus Valbuena and Conger on the Menards batting order two and oh now from Pelfrey to George Springer. And there's a strike. We'll try to get an explanation from New York as to why the uh, run did not score. Well, why it was ruled that Conger was, was not blocking was tagged the play. out. Yeah, he was tagged out clearly. And Springer bounces a single to right, leading off the first inning. Again, Mike Pelfrey falling behind in the count has to throw strike and Springer's ready for it shoots it over to the right side. Okay, we're told this is the definitive look. But the positioning of the catcher to me to as I understood the rule right. and I as fallible as anybody that he would he was not positioned properly. Well, he clearly tagged him. So you yeah, that would, that's that. not it's the a, issue. It's whether or not he gave him a lane, and why have the rule if you're not going to enforce it? At any rate, Pelfrey's got his own issues to deal with. He had a very disappointing and short start against the Astros in Minnesota last weekend, and now he's got Springer at first, Altuve at the plate. And there goes Springer and Mauer. Can Corral the ground ball and hit and run will put runners on the corners quickly in the first inning for Houston. Mauer holding on the runner Springer and the ball shot past him to the right. Well Springer was off and running with the pitch and El Tuve one of the best hitters in the game has got a very small strike zone. Mike Pelfrey threw it in that zone and shot the ball to right field kind of a hit and run. And already now nobody out Mike Pelfrey in trouble again. Astros weren't able to uh, show off a, a lot of their lineup in Minnesota. Correa didn't play. He had a hamstring issue. Springer was on the disabled list. But now Springer's at third. Altuve's at first. And Correa's up with nobody out. Missing down and in. A couple weeks ago, Correa was a virtual lock to win the American League Rookie of the Year award, but now he is getting a little pressure from, of all people, a guy who uh, didn't even play the first half of the year for the Twins, Miguel Sano. Bouncer to short. One. Safe at first. The run scores. The Astros take the lead. And a close play at first. Astros hit a lot of home runs, but they've also got a lot of speed. And Correa's speed kept him out of a double play. Northland for defense for the Twins. Eddie Rosario is in left. Aaron Hicks in center. Byron Buxton starting the day on the bench. Torrey Hunter in right. Blue Escobar, Dozier, Mauer, the infielders, and Suzuki behind the plate. An RBI for Correa is 46 of the year, and here's Evan Gaddis. Ploof. Dozier with a nice turn at second base. Trevor delivered a low throw to Brian Dozier, but he was still able to turn the double play. A couple of hits for each team. The Astros get a run, and the Twins don't.
joins the Twins after spending 15 days on the disabled list. He missed 13 games with a hamstring strain, but he is our Sanford Health Injury Report. Back with the team after four games on a surge at AAA Rochester. All he did there was hit 412 with two doubles and a home run, so he expects to pick up right where he left off. He was swinging the bat so well before he went down with that injury, and I asked Paul Mulder about Hicks' return. He said, this is big for us because we've seen such tremendous progress this year with him, particularly on the offensive side, and he said it gives him a lot more depth, especially in the outfield, and Dick and Jackson, very interesting, but a good problem to have with four outfielders that can all play out there. Thank you, Jamie Hicks and uh, Buxton and Rosario. Here's a ball driven down the right field line. That's toward the pole. That's gone. Foul ball. A foul ball just missed the pole down the opposite field line. And the count instead will be 0 2 to Plouffe. But uh, significant that Hicks and his rehab assignment played all three outfield positions. He might be the, and I don't mean that he won't be an everyday player. Take a look again at. The right field uh, foul pole and how close Trevor Plouffe came to tying the game. Two strikes. A tapper to the right side hit right at Altuve. And that's the first down. But it might be that Hicks will be an everyday player but find himself playing all three outfield positions next year, but perhaps even some this year. I asked Paul Molitor about the prospects of seeing. Rosario Buxton and Hicks together in the outfield and he said the best chance of that would be maybe in a late inning defensive uh, change uh, situation. Yeah we we may see Hicks uh, as early as Sunday in left field I think Rosario may be getting the day off against Keiko and now it put Buxton in center and Torrey out in right so we'll have to wait and see but certainly Aaron's going to be playing more than just center field. Here's Rosario. Like all good pitchers, getting ahead of Twins batters. One drifts outside. Foul back. Just to go back to the first inning because we've been given the official word from New York and uh, the. Uh, Summary of their ruling was after viewing all relevant angles, the replay official definitely determined that the catcher moved in reaction to the throw and did not violate the home plate collision rule. Additionally, the call about is confirmed. So that's the official proclamation from New York. Rosario strikes out for the second out of the second inning. Well, you could argue that for 25 or 125 years, the catcher's been. Going to the ball too, and whenever they block the plate, you can see that breaking ball right there. Off speed, good over the top breaking ball, and McHugh gets Rosario out in front. First strike out of the game. Here's Tory Hunter. And the pitch tap foul. I guess the only quarrel I have is this the what I was always told was the positioning of the catcher has to be. In fair territory, and you could clearly see before the throw got to home plate, the Condor's right foot was in fair territory, and his left foot was a foot in foul territory. Yeah, I'm not sure, and we'll have to go back and actually read the rule uh, again. But I'm not sure that is actually true that he has to be in fair territory. He's got to give the a runner a clear lane to home plate, and there wasn't any for Joe Mauer. Tap to the right side. McHugh will have a much easier, less contentious second inning. Twins go three up, three down, and trail one nothing.
except for the interpretation of a controversial rule. The bullet point number four is the one that applies here. If the umpire decides that the catcher without the ball blocked the pathway of the runner, the runner is safe. Now, watch <laughs> the catcher, <laughs> what Conger, who already here? is blocking the plate. There's The catcher is between the runner and home plate before the ball takes its last bounce. If that's not blocking the plate without the ball, I don't know what is. Exactly. That they got wrong, in my opinion. There. Jed Lowry will lead off the second inning. Taking my blood pressure cuff off. <laughs> and back to normal. Here's a pop up near the Twins dugout, proof for a look, but it is out of play. See, my blood pressure is lower than yours because I'm used to this. I, well, <laughs> I, for, for decades now, I've pretty much disagreed with umpires. So. But in another context, I was describing to somebody up here before game seven of the 91 World Series, your blood pressure was what, 85 <laughs> over 50 or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> one and one to Lowry. He'll be followed by Gomez and Rasmus. And outside. Each team with a pair of hits. Pelfrey was working behind batters most of the first inning, and McHugh was working ahead of them. One hit to the gap. Hicks racing back, racing back. And it's over his head to the corner. It's a double for Lowry. There's a lot of room in center field here in Houston, and even Aaron Hicks couldn't track that ball down. Uh, he had a good track once he got going. It's that first step that I think it kind of froze Aaron. And uh, that's typical of a lot of center fielders because you just don't know that depth perception. But once he got going, he was right on. You can see just inches away from catching that ball. But that's what baseball is, right? Game of inches. Yep. Lead off double. And now Carlos Gomez. Gomez started picking it up a little bit for the Astros about the time the Astros played in Minnesota. That's no surprise. He's always done well against his former team. Bauer with a nice pickup, and he will freeze the runner and get Gomez at first. That was a very nice backhanded pickup for the first out of the inning. Yeah, you got uh, Jed Lowry to. Get back to second base. Escobar was trying to sneak in behind him. This ball was hit very, very hard to Joe Mauer's right, and he picks it clean and looks Lowry back, and then has plenty of time to get over and touch first base. Now Colby Rasmus. Rasmus was playing in right field at Target Field last weekend, but now with Springer added to the roster, he moves to left. Swing and a miss on an off speed pitch. First off speed pitch from Mike Pelfrey. Very good pitch to start off. Kobe Rasmus. Rasmus is kind of sitting on that fastball first pitch and he got the slow one way out in front. And missing the inside corner. Just one other. Thing because it hasn't come up before regarding the first inning play and the Twins challenge. Managers after the ruling from New York can't so much as ask why. It's an automatic ejection. So that's why Paul Molitor wasn't more. There's a blast to run. And that one's not coming back. A two run home run for Colby Rasmus. Number 18. He's one of nine Astro players in double digits in home runs. Pelfrey, the stingiest pitcher in the American League when it comes to giving them up, but that was a no doubter. I spent a year in Toronto when when Rasmus was in Toronto, and the home runs that he did hit had some kind of extra energy. He can really turn on. Those fastballs, and that one, he just really got that bat speed going. And like you mentioned, Dick, that was a no doubter. Upper deck, right field, down the line. Pelfrey having more difficulty with his Houston lineup. He pitched against them in Minnesota. Had uh, two good uh, innings to get started. 
Then gave up a run in the third, five hits and three runs in the fourth, taken out of the game in the fourth inning. And now the Astros have picked up right where they left off. Up and away, one and one. The Twins did add another pitcher to the bullpen today. Logan Darnell was recalled from Rochester, and he's out there. He would probably be, be the long guy in a situation where Pelfrey gets in too much trouble. Maybe he'd be the first guy up. Face seven batters and given up four hits. And, uh, out this inning was a one-hop smash off the bat of Gomez. One and two. Chop foul. Astros have actually lost their last two series. They lost the series in Minnesota and they lost here to the Mariners. It was the first home series they had lost going back to June. This is a tough bunch generally, but particularly here at home. One and two. Missing that inside corner again, two and two. I might just not been able to catch the corner on that inside pitch. He was doing the right thing by trying to move him off the plate a little bit, but too far inside. To the left handers. To right center field. And Hicks with a sliding catch in the gap. He couldn't catch Lowry's ball back into his right, but he makes a nice catch. Coming in to his left. Well, I just don't, I can't emphasize enough what Byron Buxton and Aaron Hicks have done for the pitching staff and their ability to get to balls like this one. It's just, uh, you know, these, these saved runs, they save outs. A great effort there by Aaron Hicks to get to that baseball. We're talking about it the other day or the other night, perhaps. The prospect of having Hicks, Buxton, and Rosario together in the outfield. And on any given play, such as the ball put in play off the bat of Valbuena, you can put up like a disc mm -hmm. out in the outfield as to that left fielder's coverage area, the center fielders, the right fielders, under squaring the bunt with the Twins putting a pull shift on. But there's a lot of overlap out there already. Covering a lot of ground to make a nice catch for out number two. Well, that's just it. All three of these guys, the, the young players that you mentioned, have such good reactions to the baseball and they all can run. And so the gaps are all of a sudden shortened. They're smaller because these guys can cover the ground. Conger tried to bunt against the shift, then hits into it. And that ends the second inning, but a couple of extra base hits and a couple of Houston runs. It's three to nothing.
And now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag North Data Strong Fan, and you might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Kurt Suzuki will lead off the Twins third against Colin McHugh. Twins got a couple of two out hits in the first. And then McHugh had a much better second inning with a couple of ground ball outs and then a strikeout. He is a ground ball pitcher. Twins saw him twice last year. In early June in Minnesota, McHugh really had some control issues. Five walks lasted just four and a third innings. But then here in early August, he had a much better ball game, gave up just one run over six. Strike one to Suzuki. Escobar and Hicks will follow. Kurt Suzuki had a very nice homestand. Uh, got the day off yesterday. Chris Herman caught the day game, but uh, Kurt back in the lineup tonight. Down and away, one and one. Pitching coaches and managers are always looking for their young pitchers to make improvements with their command. And it appears that Colin McHugh is kind of doing that as he matures and gets deeper into his this year. And Suzuki spanks a sharp single to center. And the Twins get their leadoff man on here in the third. And now the number nine hitter who truth be told for the last two weeks has been Minnesota's best hitter. Yeah hottest hitter for sure. Eduardo Escobar his last 14 games been hit close to 400. He's got four home runs. And uh, 17 runs scored. He's just been getting on base a lot. Producing runs great havoc out there offensively. Hopefully the Twins can get a contribution from him tonight. We've got to get back into this ball game. Trying to do something with their leadoff single. Down and in ball one. The Astros pitching staff with a 3.36 earned run average, the best in the American League. And McHugh, a big, big part of that, it was a waiver claim from the Colorado Rockies a couple of years ago. Escobar swings and misses one and one. Interesting. Eduardo Escobar has been hitting up at the top of the lineup in the last homestand with Aaron Hicks back. Paul Molitor wants to get him to lead off, and as it works out, Buxton out of the game today. So Escobar is put down in the bottom of the lineup, but here it's kind of like he's in the middle of the batting right. order, hitting number two in this particular inning. With the leadoff man on. And a there base hit through the shift. They put a pull shift on for Escobar. And he rolled one through the hole, first and second, nobody out. That's good bat control right there. Eduardo Escobar recognized that there was a big hole at shortstop, and if he can just pepper that spot, he does that in batting practice. It's not like this is something that just happens by happenstance. He actually works on this. Holes wide open at short, and he just hits a ground ball there. You just used a phrase I don't think I've used in years bat control. It's good. It worked. Hitters used to have that, but now not many do. You're absolutely right. Well, he wasn't trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. He went to where the ball could be hit without any kind of effort. Here's Hicks tying run at the plate. And Hicks squares to punt and takes a ball. That's not such a bad idea again if Aaron Hicks can kind of bunt hard pass. The right side of McHugh, third baseman Jed Jed Lowry has to stay at third base, and he himself could maybe leg one out to have bases loaded. Of course, I'm sure Molitor would rather see him drive in this run. Be interesting whether what we've seen in recent years is just a phase, or whether it's what we will see for years, decades to come. Shifting shift. Breaking ball missing, and it's 2 0. Oh. The only thing that will uh, counteract the shifts, and Houston puts on more than anybody else, is bat control yep. and yeah, bunting yeah. and being able to put the ball. What was it? We Willie Keeler said, hit them where they ain't. Well, right. there's holes all over there. You just need to be able to exploit them. And Hicks drives it to right. Springer over there makes a leaping catch. For the first out. He almost overran the ball. One away. 
Well, Hicks hit it hard, put a good swing on it. But Springer doing a good job himself of reacting to that ball. Like you said, almost overran it, but ends up getting the first out. Hicks needed a little more hook on that ball. And you can see Springer's run. Ball wasn't in the air that long, and he was able to make a quick dash toward the line. One down, and now Dozier. On the outside corner. Right his first time up. At the end of the back going to Houston dugout 0 2. We really didn't see Brian Dozier go with that pitch away and try to drive it into right field. He has become a guy that loves to pull the ball and he can even pull the ball on the outer half of the plate. Once in a while, and especially here, you've got the whole right side kind of wide open. Fall back. And they're pitching him away. It'd be nice to see Brian just shoot the ball that way, kind of like Escobar did. Right now, the only defender on that side is Well Buena, who's playing first base. He's well off the line at first. And they got the shift for Gozier all the way to the other way. And yet all the while, be ready for the mistake in case you get one. Yeah. To try to open up and pull it into the seats. Now he's quick enough, he can do that. High and tight. One and two. Lens have touched the cue for four hits and ten at bats. Looking for the first run. Breaking ball left up. Dozier swung through it. That, believe it or not, might have been the mistake that Dozier was looking for. He just didn't hit it. Uh, he took something off this breaking ball, and again, Brian's just had a tough time waiting for it. It was a very good breaking ball, off speed and down. Actually, Dozier just swung. Oh, it was still up, but it didn't get yeah. there yet. Here's Maurer. Cracked a double into the left field corner with two out in the first and then was thrown out at the plate. On uh, Sano's ensuing single. There's a slow breaking ball and it's a strike. We saw the Chicago White Sox put an exaggerated shift in the outfield. They had Avisail Garcia playing. In the left, a right center field gap for Joe Maurer, and here in Houston now Springer is well off the line in right field, and there's a, a huge gap between him and the center fielder. I think Garcia though was 45 feet further into the gap in right center yeah. than where uh, Springer is right now. And some of that might have to do with the breaking ball. It's a very slow pitch, and if you do make contact with it, you're more apt to pull it, I suppose. And Joe will do that if he uh, if he sees a couple breaking balls and knows that they're all off speed, he'll sit on that pitch, and every once in a while he'll pull that ball. Fouled away, one and two. Carsoup.com trivia question: Which Twins player has the most career hits here? A couple of years ago, they became an American League team, so it was only interleague play prior to that. I would guess it's either Tori or Joe. In the dirt, nice block by Conger. Now, if the question is in his career, well, then it would be Tori Hunter because they played, they were a divisional opponent with the Angels, but. We're told the question is in a twins uniform. Yeah. So that would rule out Tory, I would think. I would think too. I would have to say it's the guy that's had the most games here and he's probably hitting right now. See if you can get another one. Twins need one. They need a little pick me up here after a deflating first couple of innings. Down and away didn't miss 
by Mutch. Two and two. Tough pitch by McHugh and a good take by Joe Mauer right there. I don't know how you take that pitch, but Joe does it all the time. Down and away. Runners go on the pitch. Swing on a foul tip. Hung on to by Conker. The Twins start the inning with a pair of singles, but Suzuki left it second, and Escobar left it first. off of Underwood and let's compare state fairs right Texas everything bigger in Texas right well technically their state fair is longer it goes from September 25th to October 18th so they get more people overall but the Minnesota great get together actually has more people per day if you want to compare their food you might as well stop by here the great Texas stakeout all kinds of great items that they bring in from the Texas state fair for you to compare to all your Minnesota favorite items right out here in Underwood Street at Machinery Hill <laughs> thank you Kevin I don't know that I'd want to have a, and that's probably why they wait until the fall to have the Texas State Fair in October and November. Down and away, one and one now to George Springer. Be a little toasty. Oh boy. I know it is back home anyway, but uh, this is a little oppressive here in Houston. And it's only in the low 90s. Usually when we're here, it's in the upper 90s. One and two to Springer. Springer's had some health issues, of course. He still does not have 600 at bats. Well, he's another one of the bright young stars of this Astro team. Really, in a crazy sort of way, you could put El Tuve in that group. He's not very old himself. Missing the inside corner. Texas State Fair isn't here in Houston. I didn't want to mislead anybody. People wanted to come to the Texas State Fair. It's in Dallas. Two and two to Springer. Check swing, strike three. One away in the third. Let's find Jamie Hirsch. Well, guys, we were just talking about the Minnesota State Fair and how great it is. While A.J. Hinch has actually run around those fairgrounds, he was in Minneapolis last year for the Futures game. And the All-Star game was also at Target Field. And he ran the Color Run 5K in support of Terry Ryan. Now, what's the connection, you might ask? Well, he was drafted by the Twins in 1995. Now, he decided to return to Stanford for his senior season, and so then the Twins lost their rights to him, but just kind of an interesting connection. So he ran that color run for Terry Ryan in support of his battle with cancer. Very interesting. Thank you, Jamie. Jay Hinch getting a second chance to manage a ball club. Here's the ball hit the short. Scooped up by Escobar, and an easy play for out number two. Well, Pelfrey hoping that his 
difficult innings will be his first two and he'll be able to put some zeros up there for a while. You know it's no secret he needs to hold the Astros right where they are. The Twins can't afford to give up another run and extend the lead. They've got to try to keep it close enough to be within striking range. Two down quickly and here's Carlos Correa drove in a run with a fielder's choice. Hit a ground ball to short but legged it out legged out the relay throw. Down and away ball one. Not many people thought leaving spring training that a the Astros would be where they are in first place. And then B that Correa will be where he is hitting third for a major league club. Two and oh. That's why we. I don't think over blew the uh, the significance of this. The talent on these two teams you've got Springer Correa Altuve is not an old man. He's no. uh, just uh, approaching his prime. I mean these guys are going to be around for a while with a great uh, pitching rotation they have and now the twins you know with Sano and Rosario and Buxton will figure it out. Everyone's convinced of that. These guys are going to play some awfully big series down the road. Yeah they will. There's going to be some stars of the game like we talked about. Correa, as you watch him, and this is really our first look at him, you can see that he has got great body control at the plate, and that's another key to hitting, just like it is for pitching. He's not fooled. He's not throwing his body. He's got a very short stro a stride like Miguel Sano, and he's got very strong upper body strength. So there's a lot of reasons why this kid is doing so well so early, but he's also got great hand-eye coordination. Swing and a miss. Just my first impression in person, and uh, reminds me a lot of uh, first appearances of Alex Rodriguez yeah, in his of, early days uh, with Seattle. A lot of uh, comparisons there. A lot of people have told me that. Maybe it's just the way he wears his uniform. I don't know. Swing and a miss. Pelfrey has a strikeout. In fact, two of them in the third inning. And he uh, goes one, two, three. It's three nothing. Houston. Yankee pitcher Jim Abbott no hit the Indians at Yankee Stadium four to nothing becoming the first pinstripe pitcher in a decade to throw a no hitter and a comical note in the ninth inning leadoff hitter Kenny Lofton was loudly booed after he after he fouled off a bunt attempt to make the one handed pitcher feel the ball in a four nothing game. Here's Miguel Sano taking up an in. Sano with a single to center. Gomez fielded the ball on the first hop and made a good throw to the plate to cut down Joe Maurer. There's a breaking ball over a strike one and one. 
Yeah. Right now, Sano's batting average at 298. Two and one. We're talking about Jim Abbott, he was a class act in every way. I uh, saw him pitch in college at the University of Michigan and saw him mature as a great pitcher in the big leagues. And if there was ever a tough luck pitcher, it was Jim Abbott. That guy could have won at least 50 more games. He never had any runs. Uh -huh. So no swings and misses out in front of the curveball, and it's two and two. Jammed him in a little roller to Altuve. And Sano gingerly going to first. Altuve has plenty of time to throw him out one down. And that'll bring up Fluke. But first, the Twins take on the Tigers September 14th through the 16th at Target Field. Tuesday features the U.S. Bank Value Pack. You can purchase a U.S. Bank home run Forge View ticket and receive a free Schweiger hot dog and Pepsi. Wednesday is Student Day presented by Rasmussen College. Standing room tickets are just five bucks for students. And they include a free ride on Metro Transit. Call 833 Twins. Visit twinsbaseball.com. Strike one. Call to Trevor Plouffe. Each team with four hits. The Astros have three runs. Plouffe nearly hit the right field foul pole in the second inning. And then finally did bounce out to Altuve. EQ gave up a couple hits in the first inning, a couple hits. In the third inning, but he's got his himself out of jams. Imagine him pitching in Colorado is a challenge for wow. anybody, right-handed, left-handed, swing and miss guys. But one of the things, this guy's got a great curveball. There's Blue blasting one to center. Gomez going back. That is over his head and onto Tal's Hill. Bluff to second. And he'll hold up there. And he's throwing for second base. Valbuena trailed him to second. And we'll see if the Astros challenge the call. Luff nearly got nipped at second base with the first baseman trailing him there. Well, that's where the first base coach, Butch Davis, has got to be screaming at Trevor, or Trevor Plouffe that the Guy is following him, and that'll happen once in a while where that first baseman will try to sneak in behind him. Almost gets him. And you're gonna have a better angle to see it right here. Yeah, I think he got back. Looks like he got back. Second on play, um, second base on player Gilden Colbert right on top of that play. When I started my uh, and the Astros won't challenge, when I started my broadcasting career, the twins would do that a lot with Kent Herbeck. And as you remember the Metrodome there was a cutout area at second base yeah. and the area the, the first few steps of the artificial turf the old stuff was very very slick and players would try to do what Trevor did and they would spin yeah. out I, I can remember three or four occasions where Herbeck ended up getting an assist or a put out at second base because the runner slipped trying to reverse his field. Just barely got in, and boy, Fielder Colbert couldn't have been, or maybe that was the first base up. Paul Schreiber couldn't have been in a better position. Right on top of the call. Yep. I believe it was Schreiber. One strike to Rosario. Now hit the center field, but right at Gomez. Here's the left attack. Two down. That'll bring up Torrey Hunter. Well, again, Eddie Rosario hits the ball hard that particular at bat, but Gomez right there. And now Hunter, the Twins need that elusive two out hit. And for Torrey, sadly, all the hits have been elusive. It's been a very difficult second half. He was given the day off yesterday. Uh, Joe Maurer was the designated hitter given the day off at first. So the two veteran players were given a little time to rest their legs. Down and away ball one. The hits have been more infrequent. The home runs have been more infrequent. Tory's last home run coming in Cleveland a couple of road trips ago. 
It was a big one. Bounce towards short to his left. Perea has it. And throws it out. The Twins lead blue from second base. They've had some chances against Colin McHugh, but have not broken through yet. By Century Link, your link to what's next. By NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. Astros have something special going on here, particularly in their home ballpark. They have had four winning months and a 500 month. They have not had a 20 win month like the Twins had in May, but every month they've had a winning month except for a 500 month. Strike one, and that's what you really look for. That was one of the things that really set the Kansas City Royals up in terms of them believing that they could win before they had their postseason run last year. Their monthly records the last two years, 13 and 14, were very good. They had a lot of winning months in there and that shows consistency yeah. and that shows the ability to just keep grinding it out and winning most of your ball game. I think that's what exactly it does it, the consistency and grinding you can't win consistently unless you're able to you know recover from a couple losses in a row and come back and maybe win three or four in a row it shows that you're able to bounce back you don't go into those extended losing streaks. One and two. To Evan Gaddis. Gaddis bounced into an inning ending double play in the first. Melfry tried to zip a mid 90s fastball down and away, just missed. Twins had their 20 and 7 May. Evan had a winning month. August was a 500 month for them. And so far in September, they're 2 and 1. Perhaps, but it's a base hit nonetheless for Evan Gaddis. Lead off single here on the four. Talking with Neil Allen the other day about Pelfrey, he was saying that uh, Kurt Suzuki keeps calling that off speed breaking ball and the, and the fork ball at times and wants him to throw more off speed breaking balls. And of course, Neil Allen wants to and is encouraging him to do that, but Mike's just not comfortable, so he shakes a lot, goes to the fastball. And you can't really depend on one pitch no matter how hard you throw in the big leagues. When you get behind and have to throw it over and it's the same speed all the time. Hitters will learn to adjust. Ted Lowry the batter. Hit a drive. Just barely out of the reach of Aaron Hicks at center field. And he scored on the Rasmus home run. Well it sounds like Pelfrey. Still doesn't have an abundance of confidence in that yeah. split finger pitch. That was a very successful pitch for you. How long did it take you to establish the needed confidence in that pitch? Uh, well, 
I'm going to say it, and it's going to really sound like I'm a smart aleck, but uh, it took one start. And it just because I knew when I started getting a feel for that, I knew that it was a special pitch, and it wasn't necessarily about throwing it for strikes. It was showing a hitter a different look and getting them to swing and miss and chase. And I've tried to talk to Mike myself about the fact that this pitch does not have to be a strike all the time. But with that being said, he doesn't have a true forkball in my opinion. It's it's more split chain. Well, it's kind of like that. It's almost like a split slider because his hands are on a seam, and you can't get your fingers through the ball if your fingers are on a seam. And uh, you know, I've showed him a few grips. And it's one of those things that it, you've got to go with what's comfortable, and he feels more most comfortable with his grip. And I think in Mike's defense, we have seen that splitter sometimes barely make it out of the grass. You know, where well, he, that happens to everybody. I mean, right. You throw it. It's a touch field pitch. Three and zero. Oh, now a pitch dribbled up the line, foul. I killed a lot of worms with that pitch, <laughs> and a lot of them intentionally. But and I Lance Parrish was I, uh, I probably I said a few bad words for him to do. You know, it's funny. <laughs> the worst catcher I ever had. Was Rick Stelmazak when he was catching in the bullpen, and I'd throw that, I'd kill him, I'd beat him up, and he <laughs> was not a happy camper when I threw on the side. But that was where I wanted to throw the pitch, and I needed and trusted my catchers to block him. Rick Stelmazak and his bluebird demeanor didn't <laughs> Can like you catching. imagine <laughs> those happy-go-lucky two guys yeah, we throwing missed, out in the bullpen? We missed Stella. <laughs> Great uh, coach for the Twins for more than three decades. Belfry's fought back now to 3 2 against Lowry. He'd like a ground ball hit at somebody. Let's have a pull shift. Runner goes and the pitch hit down the left field. Lowry beats him. Gannis round second and holds up there. How about that? A little respect for Eddie Rosario in left field and his arm. Gaddis off with the pitch and it looked like it was a double. Gaddis is stuck at second base. We talked about. Two words, back control, and right there you saw a great example. Watch Jed Lowry go down and shoot that ball the other way. And it looked like he was trying to do that with that inside pitch. He had a wide open left side of the infield, and he found that hole. Rosario has picked up so many assists, and maybe his reputation not only kept Gaddis at third base, but kept Lowry at first. Gomez the batter, he hit a smash. But Bauer made a nice play on backhanding it for an out in the second. And he jabs at it. It's a strike. Again, it's done run well, but he looked at where Rosario was, and it's not just the arm, it's the aggressiveness that he's shown pursuing balls like that. that. That's just it. Eddie Rosario attacked that baseball and was really. In his glove when Gaddis took a peek there, and that's why he put on the brakes. We'll see what happens here in the fourth inning. Twins already trailing three to nothing, but Pelfrey can weave his way out of this. And Gomez with an awful swing, 0 2. If Pelfrey can work his way out of this, the biggest play might not be a play where an out was recorded at all, but a runner decided to hold up at second rather than try for third base. Well, the first two guys again leading off this inning are on base. Mike Pelfrey pitching, trying to pitch out of trouble. Finally, the bullpen's getting loose out there. Six hits, 14 at bats so far against Pelfrey. Lane Boyer might be getting loose. Pelfrey thought he had that ball at the knees. It looked good from up here, but when Reynolds said it was a ball. One and two. And Pelfrey did put that ball right at the knees, according to Fox Press. And then a base hit. Gaddis to third base. And he'll be held there. So it's station to station. And Rosario's throw on one hop to Suzuki. So the fourth inning starts with three straight hits. And Pelfrey's now given up. Seven hits and 15 at bats. Go 
problem is well, does everything with a yeah. flare. He makes outs with a flare. He gets base hits with a flare. But he should have been struck out on the pitch before. Neil Allen will call it a quick trip, but he's taking his time to try to get Blaine Boyer a little extra time to get warmed up out of the bullpen. Colby Rasmus with a two run home run against Pelfrey in the second inning, coming up with the bases loaded, nobody out. Nowhere to put him. And Colby Rasmus, like you talked about, inside fastball from Pelfrey just drilled the ball in the upper deck his last plate appearance. Mike threw that one of the few off speed breaking balls to start him out in that at bat, and he was way out in front. And be interested to see if he's going to just pound him with fastballs here or try to go with something off speed or maybe even that split finger. It's the fourth inning. Twins will play the infield back at standard double play depth here. Force at every base. Ball one. Mentioned it in passing after Rasmus hit the home run. But Mike Pelfrey's been the stingiest pitcher in the American League with the qualifying number of innings pitched in giving up home runs. 0.4 home runs allowed in nine innings. But Rasmus got him in the second. Strike call Dallas Keichel, Sunday starter for Houston, is. Next best on the list at point five. Back in the second inning, there's the pitch that Rasmus got from Pelfrey, and there's where the ball went. One and one. Now one and two. Pelfrey. Back to back off speed pitches there from Pelfrey. You can see that Rasmus is just having a tough time holding back and waiting for that pitch. So well, Pelfrey needs strike three here. Yeah. Why wouldn't you throw Why it wouldn't again? You throw it again a couple times maybe. Just keep it down. And see if you'll go chasing it. If it's the first pitch, Suzuki called the changeup. Dug out by the catcher, two and two. You say if it's the first pitch, looking at Suzuki's yeah, signs, that's its first sides. sign. And a lot right. of times there'll be, you know, if there's a runner on second base, it'll be the second sign. It's something that catchers and pitchers go over before the game, and they always know what sign it'll be with runners on bases. It's typically just the first sign when there's nobody on. Two and two, Pelfrey, to Rasmus. Got him. Got his strikeout. Yeah. Off One speed down. pitch. Big out. And now Luis Valbuena. Really good movement of that off speed pitch. Valbuena hit a liner. Hicks in center field made a nice catch. Elfrey got the Twins off the field in the first inning with a ground ball to Trevor Plouffe. Twins turned a double play. And they would love for Pelfrey to get a double play here. Down and away, ball one. Runner at third, Gaddis has already shown he doesn't have much speed nor aggressiveness on the bases in the event of a fly ball. Swing and a miss with Wayna trying to hit a grand slam. Well, it's kind of a deceiving reality with Evan Gaddis at third base. He, he's up among the lead leaders in triples. You have to have a little speed to get triples. <laughs> Look at this ballpark. If you hit it out to center, yeah. you might have a lot a of room out there. 
Swing and a miss. One and two. Pelfrey. Pitching as if this game depends on what happens here in the fourth inning, and he might be right. Yeah, I would say it depends. Boyer and I think Ryan O'Rourke was up and thrown. Both of them kind of taking their time out in the pen now, just observing Mike Pelfrey. Got a chance here. Valbuena's hitting eighth for a reason. Conger's hitting ninth for a reason. One and two. Got him. Two down. And now the number nine batter, Cogger. Well, Mike can't let off the throttle here. His focus has still got to remain strong here and get through this ugly situation. First three guys get on base via the base hit. And now he strikes out back to back guys in Rasmus and Rasmussen and Valbuena. Conger up there. Big, big out. Conger hit a ground ball to Dozier his first time up. Three singles to start the inning. This is ball one. And if Pelfrey, if Pelfrey can get out of this, the left fielder Rosario and his aggressiveness and being able to stifle a first to third sprint by Gaddis, even though he was off of the pitch. May be the biggest play of the game. One and zero. Oh. A fastball off the plate. Two and zero. Oh. Funny you should mention that because it's not always about those great throws and the assists. It's about positioning yourself to prevent runners from doing it. The word's going to get out about Eddie Rosario's arm. You know, when you start looking up at league leaders and rookies with what they're able to do. Eddie's got the respect of baseball now. So if you can just continue to charge the ball and get yourself in great positions to throw, the breaks are going to come out. Deep to left. Rosario looks up. Ball on the ground slam. The number nine batter goes Oppo to make it six to nothing. And Conger becomes the tenth Astro player. With 10 or more home runs on the season. Watch this pitch again. Right down Broadway. And so now it's 6 0. And Pelfrey, who was bearing down or so it appeared, he struck out Rasmus. He struck out Valbuena. And had Conger at the plate. And instead of getting out of the inning with the Twins down just 3 0, now it's 7 0. And off the plate. And this Houston team. Born and bred to hit home runs. Have two of them against a guy who doesn't, frankly, didn't give up many. Give up a lot of hits, but he hasn't really been burned by the home run ball. Only home runs number eight and nine allowed by Pelfrey on the season. Just 315 down the left field line. It's one of the shortest fences in all of baseball down the left field line. It is a tall fence, not quite as tall as Fenway, the monster out there. But it's certainly attainable for almost every hitter to be able to hit it down the left field line. And a call third strike. Three strikeouts in the inning, but the third strikeout comes one batter too late, and it's seven to nothing.
new fans of the game, Twins fans who are here, I'm happy with how the first few innings have gone. Mike Pelfrey likely done for the day after four innings trailing, seven to nothing. It'll be Kurt Suzuki leading off the fifth. Well, that's a big hole to dig yourself into, but the Twins are going to try to battle back here. They've got to start all over again. And Suzuki is able to lead off the bottom top of the third inning with a base hit. And now a strike. Suzuki with a single leading off the third. Turns out a lot of work to do against a guy who didn't give up any runs. And we talked about it for Colin McHugh in his last five consecutive starts. He's allowed two runs or less, so no runs in this game so far. He's been stingy with him. Suzuki Escobar and Hicks here on the fifth. You know we've talked about the Astros as a first place club because we should. They've had at least a share of the division lead for 128 days out of the 151 days of the season. But it is entirely possible that if the Twins get into the wild card spot, they'll be playing not the Texas Rangers, but the Houston Astros, because there's just a two game lead for the Astros over the Rangers who don't seem to want to lose in August or September. Swing and a miss. And Suzuki strikes out one down. Escobar will bat, but first a reminder tomorrow MLB and Fox Sports 1 returns with another doubleheader filled with playoff implications. The Rays taking on the Yankees, followed by the wild card leading Pirates taking on the NL Central leading Cardinals. Coverage begins at 11.30 a.m. Central on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And then we'll go ahead and make it a triple header for you because we're on tomorrow night with our game at uh, 6 o'clock, pregame at 5.30. It's going to be interesting. This last month of the season, teams are kind of back in their own division. Right now, Texas is out on the West Coast playing the Angels in a series out there. So somebody's going to lose some ball games, and that wild card should start spreading out a yeah. little bit. Well, AJ Hinch knows that after this series with the Twins, his team has 22 straight games against American League West teams. They're playing well. And if they continue to play well during that three week stretch or so, well, a lot of things could change in the uh, American League West. Champ shot and a two hopper across the diamond. Lowry to Valbuena, two down. And that'll bring up Aaron Hicks. I mean, we can't help but get. Caught up a little bit in this whole wild card race for the Twins, but there is a lot of baseball. A lot can happen with over three weeks of the season left. And that stretch, don't forget about the Angels. They've obviously got some issues and have uh, fallen on, uh, I won't say hard times. The payroll that they have, they can't possibly fall on hard times. They just haven't played good baseball. <laughs> but. Well, we've seen teams as we keep saying Cleveland in the uh, final month of the season two years ago just pretty much ran the table finished the season with a 10 game winning streak and got into the playoffs. You'd like to not leave yourself with a long winning streak is your only hope of getting there. Right. But it has happened recently. Here's Hicks with a 1 1 count. Pulled foul. Twins rattled off a nice winning streak starting on the road in Tampa. Baltimore. Or excuse me, Baltimore, then to Tampa. Right. And uh, they're going to need to probably do that again at some point before the end of the season. And play at least 500 in the meantime. That's what makes you know, the last few Mike Kelfley starts so disappointing if he's done after four innings. That's a total of a 12 and a third innings in his last three starts.
selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag North Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. And we're showing that with the barbers at work here. I need a haircut. I want to get a haircut at some point in this road trip. I can get that done here. I don't know what we're going to do with your headset, but we maybe could have that. Happen. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, game like today, perhaps you <laughs> cover go, cover play over for a few innings, cover play by play for a couple innings, or maybe if we have like a 17 inning game here on Sunday. No, we're not going to have that. <laughs> Wish, you're sending the wrong vibes here. <laughs> Here's Altuve. Nice backhanded stop by Plouffe. He's got a hurry. Oh, what a play by Trevor Plouffe! Backhanding the ball and about the longest throw a third baseman could make against a speedy runner. Yeah, that was an outstanding play. Number one to get to that ball and use his feet, get in position to backhand it, pick it. Now Trevor rarely puts that chest in front of the ball. He's always feeling it off to his right or left. But then he has to make a strong throw. It's a high throw. Thank goodness for Joe Mauer's six foot six or six foot four frame. He stretches all the way up. And just gets El Tuve. Good play. One down. Carlos Correa, Boyer, the new pitcher, with Pelfrey leaving after four innings. And the last, uh, well, really going back to the last four starts, Pelfrey's gone five and a third, four and two thirds, three and two thirds, and four today. The difference being, well, this was a, a shellacking with seven runs, two home runs. Pelfrey hadn't given up. A home run since uh, July 22nd in Anaheim, and he gave up two big and costly ones here tonight. One and one from Boyer to Correa, and over the inside corner. If there wasn't such a thing as protecting young players in innings. I think you would see Barrios up here, Barrios, whatever it is. Jose Barrios. Barrios. And Mike Pelfrey might be watching the rest of the year. Tapped up the line. And a foul ball. Logan Darnell was a starter at Rochester. Now he's been brought up ostensibly to be a long reliever. He just pitched yesterday, so he's unavailable to come into the game here. I don't even know whether the Twins will be looking at options. Uh, Pelfrey's really picked a terrible time for the team and for him to go through maybe the worst stretch he's had in a Twins uniform. He's one of the most liked of all players. I think he really gets along well with his teammates. They like him a lot, but you know they they also need him to go out and do a little bit better than he's done. Really through June, with the exception, I guess, of his last start in June. Boyer gets a strikeout. You could pretty much count on Pelfrey to go six or seven. I mean, not just innings, but good innings. He had a tremendous first half. Two down here in the fifth. That'll bring up Evan Caddick. Gaddis with a single to lead off the fourth inning. And the Astros started the inning with three singles but hadn't scored a run. In part because Gaddis doesn't run particularly well, but then ultimately it didn't matter, did it? Conger hit an opposite field grand slam and the Astros blew the game open. And a fastball chased and it's 0 and 2. Kevin Gaddis really been a good fit for the Astros. Here's a guy that came up in the Atlanta Braves organization and uh, eventually found his way back over here to the American League as a designated hitter. And in this ballpark, it's suited for him. He's got a lot of power. And talk about all the additions, he's a good one for. Well, now Boyer's Astros. late getting to the bag. Yep. And safe is the call. Mauer cut the ball off in front of. Dozier we've seen Joe do that more aggressively now going as far to his right as he can but that time Boyer was a little hesitant at getting over there and I don't know that the twins are going to challenge it or not a hit is no. given have him get it this has got to be a total reaction by the pitcher it doesn't matter whether you see the first baseman or the second baseman feeling ball anything to your left you instantly have to bust your tail over to first base yeah. it's just part of the 
basic laws of pitching one on one. You've got to do that. And you know, then if the first baseman calls you off or it's an easier play, second baseman might get the ball. First baseman stays there. You don't have to do anything, but you have to be in position to feel that. And that's part of the, every spring. They do it hundreds and hundreds of times and then kind of back off during the season. Well, we saw Glenn Perkins yep. toward the end of the game a couple games ago. I didn't tough. react. Didn't react as quickly as he could have. Here's Jed Lowry. And now a big hit toward the gap. Gaddis to second. He'll try for third. And Hicks with a return throw to the infield. So with two outs, Gaddis will get an infield hit. Lowry has his third hit. And the Astros have got a big hit with Two outs in the fourth inning are looking for a bigger one again here in the fifth. You know, I don't want to pick on Blaine Boyer here, but he could have really helped himself. Now he's got runners at the corners. He had to throw another pitch. However many more pitches this inning he's going to throw just because he didn't field his position, get over to first base. And now Gomez got the third successive single to start the fourth inning. Down and away, ball one. Not two and oh. First two batters here in the fifth. And the Gaddis at bat. Lowry with a solid single. And another threat for Houston. High fly deep left field. Rosario back to finally end the inning, catching it on a warning track. Two men are left aboard a scoreless fifth. It's still 7 0 Houston. Leading seven to nothing. Twins fans, don't forget at Twins home games, bring your circle me signs. And if you get circled, you may find yourself in the Minnesota Lottery's winner circle where you could win $100 worth of lottery scratch off tickets courtesy of the Minnesota Lottery. Brian Dozier will lead off the sixth through the Twins against Colin McHugh. Astros are not without their pitching issues. Scott Feldman has been really, really good for them this year. Had a uh, Start skip, or he, he will have a start skip. Came out of the ball game with some shoulder inflammation. One strike to Dozier, and now strike two. 
We're going to see Lance McCullers tomorrow night. We saw him at Target Field. We saw what a good young pitcher and prospect he is. A very good arm. Urban Santana hopes to make it back to back really good starts against the Astros. One and two. Two and two. Team with the best record in the American League, of course, the Kansas City Royals. The Twins go there from here. Well, it's kind of right on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> on the ground, picked up by Lowry. And a little bit of a stretch by Valbuena. Water away. That'll bring up Bauer. You can follow live Twins baseball every day with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to the Twins all season with MLB.tv Game of the Day. In game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, and more. Browse the app's new features, including StatCast tracking videos and bilingual access for Spanish speaking fans. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Jamie Hirsch, Jack Morris, Dick Bramer here in Houston. Bauer one for two with a double. Bauer doubled with two outs in the first, was thrown out at the plate on a play that was challenged by the Twins. The call upheld. The challenge was that Bauer had nowhere to slide. Up the middle, he's got his second hit. A one out single in the sixth. Bauer aboard for Sano. Sano hit the single that nearly scored Bauer from second base. Gomez gets credit for an assist. And then in the fourth, Sano led off with a bouncer to short. Yeah, and it's kind of a little bit interesting, I'm sure, for fans to watch this guy here in an imposing ballpark. And they see him hit a ground ball and barely run. They think, what do we got here? But they don't really understand that he's dealing with a hamstring strain and that you know he's got to he's been instructed not to try to stretch out anything he doesn't want to make it any worse we noticed that when we were in Pittsburgh and Andrew McCutcheon did run a ball out hard and they asked about it said well no he's got a knee problem and you know right. has been told to conserve your hustle if that's it, it sounds terrible to put it that way but you can imagine what Sano is going through here he He's someone who does run balls out, yeah. and he's got to he run he, pretty good. He's got to put the governor on himself. You know, he's got to throttle down when uh, it uh, requires it, for fear of tearing it, popping Worse. it, whatever, and then he's and then done for the year. The rest of the summer. One and two to Sano, and a high fastball gets him. Two down. Six strikeout now. From the queue. No walks. Watch this fastball. He goes up the ladder with Miguel and he's just not able to put the bat on the ball. That'll bring up Ploof. Ploof with a double with one out in the fourth. Breaking ball missing the inside corner. Twins have had some opportunities. They've had base runners anyway, but McHugh hasn't compounded matters by walking anyone. A couple of two out hits in the first, two hits to lead off the third. Bluff's one out double, and now Mauer's one out single. Popped up right field. Springer, Gomez, either one can catch it. And it's Springer to end the inning. Six shutout innings for McHugh and a 7 nothing lead.
Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's. With $1.69 iced coffees and 69 cent vanilla cones, you can get Coach Treats excited all summer long at McDonald's. It's seven to nothing. Houston, couple of home runs against Mike Pelfrey, a two-run home run and a grand slam, but broken it open for the time being. Ryan O'Rourke comes out of the Twins bullpen. He'll be uh, the next reliever to try to pitch through the end of the game. And for a while, Paul Mulder was going to O'Rourke quite often. He's got 20 games already and wasn't a part of the bullpen staff for quite some time this summer. Rasmus, Valbuena, and Conger. First pitch to Hopper. Joe putting the glove down on uh, the ground for the second hop, and Rasmus is quickly retired. Twins took two out of three from the Astros in Minnesota. Hoping to uh, do that again here. The games were very uh, fun to watch, be a part of. Hopefully, it's fun to watch on TV. But the scores were three to nothing, Twins four to one, Houston seven to five, Twins. You'd like to think that maybe this game aside, that the Twins will have a couple of competitive games and maybe come out of here with a couple of wins. Well, Ribbon Santana had a very good start as last time. It'd be great to see him back up that start against the same team within a week. Sometimes it's hard to do, but then again, when you have good success, it's not as hard. Chris Carter is the new pinch hitter. Carter hitting for Valbuena with the left hander on the mound. Carter will pick up the position. And he takes ball one and then ball two. AJ Ochter next in line for the Twins. Four innings by the starter, maybe one inning apiece, a piece for uh, assorted relief pitchers. There are plenty of them out there. Four lefties, six righties. That's not counting Glenn Perkins, who's back in the Twin Cities. Yeah, Fien, Cotts, Boyer, and Dunsing all pitched in yesterday's game. So Paul's got a variety of guys that are ready to pitch out of the pen. Some Three and one to Carter. Some of them won't be used uh, unless the Twins get closer. And a walk to Carter. Bring up Conker. Conker a switch hitter. He hit a home run to the opposite field as a left-handed batter. That was the first walk of this ball game. For the most part, both sides have been throwing strikes. Swing and a miss. Jason Castro, the regular catcher for the Astros, hurt himself in Minnesota. Going to be out for a while, so Conger doing what he can. He was the backup. He is the primary catcher now. Castro was hitting just 220, but he hit 11 home runs. And now Conger is hit double figures in home runs. 21 home runs out of the catcher position for Houston. They do bang the ball out of the ballpark, and it is a well a hitter friendly ballpark here at Minute Maid. Alphabetically, the Astros have Altuve, Carter, Castro, Conger, Correa, Gaddis, Rasmus, Springer, Tucker, and Valbuena with 10 or more home runs. Popped up. Mauer, Suzuki, and Joe calling him off, making a catch at the end. Long run for Joe Mauer, and he's got to find the wall there. Maybe even look at that net that's behind home plate, but he does a nice job of getting to that ball. Watch how far Joe Mauer has to run to get to that ball. So calling off Suzuki. Astros aren't done, by the way. 
Gonzalez and Gomez have nine and eight home runs, so presumably they'd have a chance to get double figures in home run. Springer retired. It's a scoreless six for Ryan O'Rourke, but a seven nothing Houston lead. Story of the game. Colby Rasmus connects on a Mike Pelfrey fastball and puts the Astros up three to nothing with that swing of the bat. That was in the bottom of the second inning. And then Hank Conger, bottom of the fourth inning with bases loaded and two outs, goes opposite field for a grand slam. Astros lead seven nothing. Colin McHugh has been spot on. Six shutout innings, six strikeouts, no walks. And he's been dealing here for the Astros tonight. Seven of the nine starters for Houston were in double digits and home runs. Conger joined the list. Rasmus was already there. Here's Eddie Rosario to start the twin seventh against McHugh. And strike one. Not a good day again for Mike Pelfrey. On the other hand, McHugh has been. Complete opposite. The total command tonight. The Twins have really scuffled to try to get runs. They've got six hits in this ball game, over six innings, but cannot play the runner yet. Rosario with a strikeout in the second, a line out to center in the fourth, dug out of the dirt or blocked by Conger. You know, if it wasn't for, we were talking about the stars of the future that are playing here tonight. And we were talking about. Correa for the Astros and of course Sano for the Twins. But if you take those two guys out of the equation, Eddie Rosario's name might be yeah. part of the Rookie of the Year. He's got nine home runs coming in today's game, 37 RBIs. Came into the game hitting over 270. Join Fox Sports North and the Minnesota Wild for the Breakaway 10K, 5K, and one mile run on Saturday, September 19th, benefiting the Minnesota Wild Foundation. All participants receive a t shirt and are qualified to win two sweet tickets for the Wild Oilers game Saturday, September 26th. For more info, visit foxsportsnorth.com. Click on upcoming events on the Hot Topics bar. One down, here's Hunter. A couple of ground ball outs. You're looking for win number 15.
Dallas Keuchel Sunday starter already has 16 wins. Doing what they're supposed to do. Their rotation has been outstanding here this year as far as consistency and obviously McHugh has kind of found a new gear here at the age of 26 coming into today's game. Excuse me, age 27. And that's kind of the turning point for a lot of pitchers. They either have figured things out and really make a positive move in the right direction or they sort of disappear. Is he flying to right? Springer's there. Two down. And in the case of McHugh and Sunday starter Keiko, I mean, right now they've combined for 30 wins this year. You can see what we were talking about. Twins will uh, face uh, the best pitching staff in terms of ERA here in Houston, and then they'll go to Kansas City. But I mean, neither McHugh nor Keiko are going to light up the radar gun. These guys have learned how to pitch, and uh, as a pitcher yourself, you've got to appreciate the fact that you know these guys aren't throwing 96, 97. Have no idea where the ball's going. They they put the ball right where they want to put it. Yeah, I think Keiko probably has better overall stuff. He can pound it a little bit harder than McHugh, but McHugh has really learned. And, and this is a guy that fought with his command for a few years, and even early this year at times, talking to some of the Astro people about him, they were saying that. He still fights his command at times, but you know I think as you mature and you know that age of 26, 27, 28 years old is really where a lot of guys start figuring things out and the walks start diminishing and the strikeouts either increase or the hits are less. I mean they just kind of get a feel for what they are as a pitcher. You don't have to throw 96. It sure can help, uh, and it certainly helps when you know where the ball's going at 96. That. It can become quite easy then, but you have to have more than one pitch. Even anybody that throws 96 will get beat up if they don't have anything to back it up with. And these guys all have multiple pitches. Suzuki takes a two out walk. First walk issued by McHugh, and it'll bring up Escobar. Look at that. In the third inning, the Twins started the inning with a pair of singles, but McHugh got out of it throwing 20 pitches. That's his high for the night. Very good pitch count. We're going to go through seven here, probably with uh, under 100 pitches, maybe. Escobar with a single and two trips. Deep to right, but foul. Know that right now the, the Twins have a hitter who more consistently makes contact with the barrel of the bat than Eduardo Escobar. And with Sano, you've got the immense power, and he's hitting about 300. But there are a lot of swings and misses and a lot of strikeouts. This guy, I mean, if he puts it in play, it's not a jam yeah, shot. It's, it's not off the end of the bat. He's hitting it hard, especially here in the last few weeks. Really got bailed in. Paul Mauder has penciled him in as the everyday shortstop for a half a month now, and he's really uh, relished that opportunity. Twins are, are lucky to have him right now because he's been one of their better hitters. And now flip foul. Joe Thatcher. Yeah, 98 pitches now for McHugh, so they're getting a little activity. Joe Thatcher, the left hander. One of three left handers. Now, yeah, 10 pitchers in the bullpen for the Astros right now, including uh, former twin and Twin Cities native Pat Neshek, who's been hung with a couple of losses his last two times out. One and two. And Escobar looks at ball two. Los Angeles last year had the best record in the league with 98 wins. And right now, the Houston Astros are five and a half games better than they are. It will pop up near second base. And wouldn't you know it? We talk about how Escobar never gets jammed. It looks like he got jammed in the seventh inning.
to nothing Houston as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. We're going to ad lib this. I guess I've heard are. it about 10,000 times, but I have the slightest idea how it starts. Oh, uh, this copyrighted <laughs> telecast, in case you were uh, thinking about recording this, is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins. It may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. See, the way that's worded, though, I bet you, you and I get in a lot of trouble if we just tried to ad lib that. You know? If we just said, you know, ask before you yeah. record just and rebroadcast. Don't, don't try to sell it to right. anybody. Just Ad living it probably would not legally protect the Twins LLC. Right. Here's AJ Octor. And Altuve pops it up to center. Plenty of room out there for Aaron Hicks. And Octor gets Altuve on one pitch. One down, and that'll bring up Correa. Correa, 0 for 3, drove in a run on a ground ball in the first inning, the first run. Doctor had a good year at Triple A. Twins are trying to figure out whether his talents, his stuff, will play up here in some capacity. It was up at the end of the year last year, up earlier this year. Well, when they expanded the rosters, there's certainly a few more bodies out there in the bullpen, and AJ has not had a lot of activity since that Cleveland series, really, where he got his feet wet. Up, Bauer might have another chance here. Crossing the line. Ground balls, pop ups. Joe's have been busy. Two down. Zubas Palooza is returning to Target Field. A special offer, including a reserve seat for the game Friday, October 2nd, when the Twins take on the Kansas City Royals. Plus, your very own limited edition Minnesota Twins Zubas pants. Take advantage of this special offer. Available exclusively by logging on to twinsbaseball.com slash Zubas. Two down on the seventh, and now Evan Gaddis. Down and away, ball one. Mentioned that the Astros lost a series at home to Seattle. But I misspoke. It was the first home series they lost since May. That's how well they played. That's pretty here impressive. at home. 46 and 23 at home. Twins 42 and 26. That's nothing to sneeze at. Well, Twins fans realize how well the Twins have played at home. And when you look at the Astros and you look at the Royals and you realize that they've played even better than the Twins at home, you realize. Why they are where they are, first place in their respective divisions. And the uh, significance of the difficulty of this road trip. Twins trying to make up ground in the wild card standings and a couple of tough assignments. Trying to win a couple of games here and win a couple of games in Kansas City. Going into tonight's game, the Twins and the Astros have identical road records 27 wins, 38 losses. It's just good to come here and see as many people here. Well, yeah. Just over 27,000 to paid, I believe, today. 27,807. TV ratings here in Houston, which literally were immeasurable for a couple of years, have bounced back. And this is this is a great baseball area, obviously, in terms of the major league product it's had since. The early 60s. There's a big pop-up near the Twins dugout and out of play. 
I mean, they've been here about as long as the Twins have been in Minnesota. Yeah. And the Astros have a good baseball history. Like you mentioned, they've won World Series. They've had postseason experience. They just put a Hall of Famer in Cooperstown this year. Craig Biggio was inducted this summer. And they have his number uh, out in that hill in center field out of respect for Biggio. with a big swing of the foul. There's number seven in the grass on Tal's Hill. Eventually I'll get there and it has nothing to do with anything other than my feeble mentality, but I still think of them as being in the National League. I, I, I just you'll, cannot. You'll get there. My first reaction is they are a National League team and this is an interleague series. And of course it isn't. Nice hitting for Octor. Three up, three down in the Houston seven. And even in the loss column, the Yankees have, in the minds of many, overachieved. I'm not used to saying that about the Yankees, but I don't know that there wasn't significant concern that this might be a fourth or fifth place ball club in that division. Until they realized what a great bullpen they had. Yeah. And that's the formula for the Royals, and then all of a sudden. They started grinding a little more offensively and put up some numbers. The pitching, the starting pitchers some have huge, gotten better throughout the course of the summer. Some huge question marks in the lineup. Alex Rodriguez, Mark Teixeira had great years. Now Teixeira is hurt. Rodriguez has cooled off a little bit. Half swing to the strike, and it's one and two. Hicks hitless here in his first return from the DL. Struck out his last time, top of the fifth inning. Hit the ball hard in the third with two on and nobody out. He lined out to the right fielder Springer. Backhanded by Lowry. And the ball hit Hicks in the face. Deflected off of Carter. And Hicks should get credit for an infield hit. And it is a hit for Hicks. Good stab by Lowry, but his throw one hopped. Carter who could not pick up the yeah a lot of times a, a position player a third baseman will get rid of the ball quick and throw that one hop and hope that the first baseman can pick it and Carter could not Aaron Hicks just hustling he can't be watching the ball he's got to run through the bag and that ball comes up and Ooh. hits the front of his helmet but I don't think it hit his face no nope. surprised him though the lead off head and now Dozier
Pitches up, ball one. Dozier is 0 for 3. A fly to right, a strikeout, and a ground ball to third. Hit into the shift. Altuve runs to the bag, fires the first double play. Finally, after years of watching shifts, I think baseball fans too realize just because it's hit hard up the middle, it's not an automatic base hit. Now, Tuve was right there to get the ground ball and turn it into a double play. Carsoup.com trivia question. It's got to be Joe Maurer, doesn't it? I would think that's my. No. Oh. Trevor Plouffe. Well, I'll be switched, just like the Astros pitcher will be switched. McHugh out to a standing ovation. Seven and two thirds innings of shutout ball. In bullpen, and that's not a treat in and of itself. Twins and the Angels square off at Target Field September 17th through the 20th. Thursday night is a thirsty Thursday night featuring happy hour from 5.30 to 6.30, including deeply discounted beverages and appetizers at select Target Field locations. Saturday, a DQ sensational Saturday. Sunday, a Super America Not Whole Kids Day. Call 800-33-TWINS. Visit twinsbaseball.com for tickets. Now Joe Thatcher will come out of the Houston bullpen to try to finish off at least the eighth inning. Joe Maurer, a couple of hits in tonight's game. Both coming off the right-hander McHugh. Now he'll face the left-hander Thatcher. In there for a strike. With a couple of hits, the average up to 271. Fox tracks presented by Carrier, one and one. Guy's got this sweeping low three quarter delivery. Yep, he's uh, a little bit lower than Chris Sale, not near the same body type, but <laughs> he comes definitely around from the same angle. to the Twins I suppose apart from this game is the Texas game they're underway scoreless after one playing in Los Angeles against the Angels. 
game and a half behind the Texas Rangers now in the wild card standing. Three and two. Michael Tonkin will be asked to get the Astros out in the eighth inning. Tonkin's been back and forth parts of the last three years. The Twins are hoping at some point he'll be able to stay up here. Two things of concern for Tonkin. They want to see here in September when given an opportunity, even in this 7 nothing game in the eighth inning. They want to see, as you said, a mixture. And his pitch assortment and also the ability to hold runners on. Paul Molitor's come out here to have a little chat with the home plate umpire. And now the home plate umpire Jim Reynolds is taking uh, some note of some sort over to AJ Hinch and just letting him know. Well, there's some changes for the Twins. Escobar has gone over to second. Andy Santana short looks Andy like. Santana at short. Kenny Vargas is taken over at first base. Of course, the new pitcher is Michael Tonkin. Looks like uh, Shane Robinson's out in right field. And, and strike one. Pinch hitter here too is Jonathan Villar. Lowry gone three for three today. Tonkin with a fastball low. You look at that, 95 with some sink. You understand why the Twins are have been patient with Tonkin, trying to figure out what role he could play up here. Again, this time off the plate, two and one. Three and one. 
the more I've watched the baseball, the more I really as a starting pitcher, you really need three quality pitches in order to have success in the major leagues as a starter. And as a reliever, you need two. Hawking gives up a base hit to start the bottom half of the eighth. I think all five pitches were fastballs, and we are looked at the first four, got into a favorable count, sat on a fastball, and spanked it up the middle. Now they're big league hitters for a reason. You throw them the same pitch in the same spot, and they're going to track it a few times, and their timing will adjust accordingly. And then it's just a matter of them making contact with the ball and driving it somewhere. 2013 Tonkin was up for nine games last year 25 games starts Gomez with a fastball and strike one. Back and forth back and forth this year. There's the breaking ball. And Tonkin gets a foul ball. With it. Here you see the changes Robinson and right. Escobar to second, Santana to short, Vargas at first, Eric Fryer also yep. going to catch it. He missed Fryer. Two strikes to Gomez. And with a high fastball. This is Tonkin's 18th game this year. One down here in the eighth. Holy Rasmus. Rasmus with a two run home run, taking the game from one to nothing to three to nothing. And then Conger hit a grand slam off Mike Pelfrey to make it seven to nothing, and that's where we sit. Now the twins shift the infield over. Inside one and one. You look at the division leaders. Good breaking ball right there yeah. from Tonkin. Hope would too that if he yeah. gets more strikes, swings and misses, foul balls with that, that he would uh, have more confidence in it. The Blue Jays leading the East, and they've got a better rotation than they had a couple months ago with David Price there, and they've got a lineup that can bludgeon the baseball. Wow. Scoop by Fryer. The Royals have the outstanding bullpen. In a lineup that's better than some people think. I don't know that their starting rotation is as good as what we have and will see from the Astros here at the end of the season. <laughs> You're basically talking about on paper, and you got to play the games because nobody knows. Hooked in the right field, a base hit. The R will hold up at second. Second hit of the game for Colby Rasmus there. We get started tomorrow an hour earlier. And our Century Link, what's next? Urban Santana spun a beauty against the Astros at Target Field. Lance McCullers was impressive as well. It'll be a rematch tomorrow. Well, McHugh is brilliant for the Astros tonight. That guy right there, Urban Santana, had a great outing his last time out. And gave the Twins a chance, which they came through and won a game, and it was a big game to win. Hit hard to foul. And we know that it's going to be a tough go for the Twins on Sunday with possibly this year's Cy Young Award winner. Dallas, Dallas Keiko pitching the game against the Twins. It'll be young Tyler Duffy facing him on Sunday. So be nice there's Keiko right there. I can't help but think, you know, I know we're dating ourselves, but Smith Brothers cough drops. <laughs> that's the poster child for it right there. Did you like the red ones or the black ones? I, I like love the red ones. Did you? Yeah. I like the black ones. Big black licorice fan. And now foul back. Two strikes to Carter. Carter 
many baseball fans know is a very, very strikeout prone. Not that we'd like to get one here. He's given up two hits. We'd like to pick up his second strikeout. Breaking ball. The Carter gone quickly, two down. And Conker will bat. This is the pitch that the Twins have wanted Michael Tonkin to kind of work on, and he's got good downward plane on that breaking ball. It's a little off, it's not quite as hard as his fastball. Two on, two out, and here's Conger. The swing of the bat came up from Conger's bat in the fourth inning. And the placement of that swing in the fourth, Gaddis, Lowry, and Gomez all singled, but no one had scored yet. And then Pelfrey came back to strike out Rasmus and Valbuena, and it looked like he was on the cusp of getting out of a real mess and keeping the Twins in the game at three to nothing. With another big two out here, he'll drag in another run. He's got five runs batted in and a two out single. Third hit of the game makes it eight to nothing. Outer half of the plate, that ball is running away from Conger, and yet he's able to pull this ball. And not much that Escobar could do. And Robinson has to go to the gap to get the ball and get it back in. Springer out of the game. Preston Tucker will hit here in the eighth. Thirteen hits for the Astros in all eight of the game's run. With a dozen home runs, 31 runs batted in. Still scoring a run here, they very likely won't need in the ninth inning. On the outside corner. First year manager, AJ Hinch, first year in Houston. By Fryer. AJ got his feet wet over in uh, Scottsdale, managing the Diamondbacks. Got a much improved team here. <laughs> yes. You know, a lot, lot more talent to work with, and maybe we haven't even seen what. Will eventually emerge from this Astro team. Three teams with better records in the league, managed by. Paul Molitor of Minnesota, AJ Hinch here. Jeff Bannister in Texas. All well, not all three of them I don't expect will be playoff bound, but they're contending. Then you've got Kevin Cash in Tampa, another first year manager. Boy, it sure looks like there's going to be a lot of turnover in the managerial world before 2016. Uh, what teams end up Replacing their managers, of course, remains to be seen. But, well, there's some high-profile jobs that might be opening up here uh, shortly after the season ends. Yeah, you would think. Terry Francona's got an interesting situation with his general manager. Mark Shapiro taking over the presidency of the Toronto Blue Jays. And 
the strikeout Francona said he would not use the out clause in his contract to leave the Indians. That's the very type of clause that got Joe Madden out of Tampa Bay with the Chicago Cubs. Congress grand slam and eventually five runs batted in by the Houston catcher on uh, in the first game of this series. It's been a fun night for Houston fans. So much for Twins fans. Michael Feliz will come in to pitch to the Twins in the ninth, starting with Miguel Sano. They're going to give Feliz a little bit of work. You can see he's only been in one game here at the major league level. With all the substitutions, I don't know if it's significant or not, interesting to me at least. And oh, still in there. He's a guy who got a hamstring issue. Well, he's not playing on the field, I guess, so no. he can continue as the DH. But if he hits a gapper here, you know. Even under these circumstances, you don't want him to exert himself too much. Up and in, one and one. In the ball game, a first inning single. Maurer was thrown out at the plate by Gomez, and the Twins really haven't threatened to score since. Big swing and a miss, and it's one and two. So no one for three. Hits one for four. Power two for four. Two hits scattered here or there, but not enough to make up eight runs. Foul. We opened the game up talking about the young players, the talented young players on the field tonight for both teams. Of course, Buxton didn't play in this game as of yet. Rosario 0 for 3. Bucks, uh, Vargas has got a hit with a couple, two hits actually, with a couple strikeouts. Three now strikeouts it's 94, and so no strikeout. And Correa hitless in five plate appearances for the Astros. One down in the ninth, and that'll bring up Trevor Plouffe. Jake Marisnik in center. Rasmus moving to right. Preston Tucker in left. We are at third. Feliz on the mound. And Kloof goes upstairs to follow a 95 mile per hour fastball.
Deep to left, but looking foul. Two strikes to Plouffe. Twins have won six of their last seven series, the exception being the three game sweep in New York. She is a very happy young lady. And now the other way, a foul ball. Appears unless the Twins do something miraculous here with one out in the top half of the ninth inning that they're going to lose back-to-back -back games and start this series on the wrong foot. With that being said, we had talked about it. You know, it's it's a tough series, and this ball club, the Astros, plays extremely well at home. It'd be really nice to see if they could win tomorrow's game. You gotta out pitch him. You gotta yep. find a way to out pitch him. You pretty much know what you're gonna get I from can, these guys. I can predict that the Twins will be only as good as their pitching from here on out. I think their offense can bang it with anybody in baseball. On any given night, they're gonna have tough, tough go against the better pitchers, but they're pretty solid offensively. They're only gonna go as far as the pitchers allow them. Blue strike shot two down. And that'll bring up Eddie Rosario, 0 for 3. Twins haven't scored since Rosario's grand slam yesterday. He came early in the ball game, in the third inning. Down and away, ball one. Swing and a miss, one and one. Astros very aggressive before the trading deadline, getting Gomez, Fires, Casimir. They're making a run for it. And they are looking pretty good these days. Down low, two and one. In this series opener, Anthony Lapanta, the Twins have lost back to back games now. We'll try to rebound tomorrow in their hopes of continuing to win series. 